Hello, my wonderful friends. Meg is here back in the library. We're in chapter two of To Kill a Mockingbird. I can't wipe the smile off my face. I am beyond happy that this book has come into my life. Just two chapters in. I love this kind of writing. I love this kind of banter. I love our narrator, Scout. It's just, oh, this story so far is so fun. So she starts school in a week and she's so excited. She, during the winter months, would be up in her tree house and spying the schoolyard with her telescope that Jim, her brother, had given her. And she learned their games and followed Jim's red jacket through the circle of blind man's bluff secretly sharing their misfortunes and minor victories. She longed to join them. Uh, it, oh, and this was cute. This is the kind of banter that I love here. She says, Jim agreed to take me to school the first day, a job usually done by one's parents, but Atticus had said, Jim would be delighted to show me where my room was. I think some money changed hands in that transi transition because she heard an unfamiliar rattle of coins in Jim's pocket on the way to school. This Atticus cracks me up. There, This family relationship is so funny. Um, so now she's in her first grade and uh, the teacher is getting frustrated because she can already read. She can already not just print, but write well. And so the teacher is telling her, uh, you need to tell your father to stop teaching you that I'm your teacher now. And she's kind of frustrated because she can write in the uh, first grade and they don't do that till the third grade. And I had such a flashback. So I taught my son first grade. I was going to homeschool him. I wasn't crazy about the school system, uh, but he picked it up like that. He could read so quick. Kindy, I mean, kindergarten, he was reading at like a fifth grade level. He just it advanced so far. So when I did finally put him in school in second grade, I put him in a nice private school. The teacher was blown away. She's all, who was his teacher? Because he could read so well. I mean, just at like uh, in a way advanced level. And I, I got to pat myself on the back and say, yeah, th that was me. You know, and so the, the teacher is just blown away by how much she can read. She shares the story of how she was actually born reading, right? And the teacher's not buying it. She keeps having these run-ins. Scout and the teacher, they're, they're not mixing here. Uh, and now it's lunchtime. And uh, she asks everyone to bring out their lunch. But this one poor kid, he he's broke as a joke. He don't have a lunch. And uh, so the teacher says, well, here's a quarter. Go get some food. You can pay me back tomorrow. The poor boy is just embarrassed. He doesn't want to say, I could never pay you back. And my family doesn't have any money. Um, and so now the teacher is getting frustrated with him. And now if everyone turns to scout, to stick up for him and explain to her how things work. Because she's the smarter one of the bunch there. And so listen to how cute this is. Um, impatience crept into Miss Caroline's voice. Here, Walter, come get it. Walter shook his head again. When Walter shook his head a third time, someone whispered, go ahead and tell her, Scout. I turned around and saw most of the town people and the entire bus delegation looking at me. Miss Caroline and I had conferred twice already, and they were looking at me in the innocent assurance that, that familiarity breeds understanding. <laughs> this, the way she talks. I mean, she's six years old. She talks like she's 40. It just cracks me up. I rose graciously on Walter's behalf. Ah, uh, Miss Caroline. What is it, Jean Louise? Uh, Miss Caroline, he's a Cunningham. And I sat back down like that explained it all. <laughs> what? I thought I had make, made things sufficiently clear. It was clear enough to the rest of us. Walter Cunningham was sitting there lying his head off. He didn't forget his lunch. He didn't have any. He had none today, nor would he have any tomorrow or the next day. He had probably never seen three quarters together at the same time in his life. I tried again. Walter was one of the Cunninghams. 
Miss Caroline. I beg your pardon, Jean Louise. That's okay, ma'am. You'll get to know all the country folks after a while. The Cunninghams never took anything they can't pay back. No church baskets, no script stamps. They never took anything off anybody. They get along on what they have. They don't have much, but they get along on it. So this is just the way she talks. It absolutely cracks me. Is that hilarious? Is that kind of funny banter, you know? Uh, and so now she's explaining why she has this knowledge of the Cunninghams. Uh, Walter's father was one of Atticus's clients. I love how she calls her dad Atticus instead of dad. Um, and so Walter's father said, I'll never be able to pay you. And of course, Atticus's big heart we're getting to know says, that's the least of your worries, Walter. Don't worry about it. And uh, and, and so then Jem was asking uh, Atticus, uh, you know, will he ever pay you? And he says he will, but not with money. You watch. And so he said, we watched one morning, Jem and I found a load of stove wood in the backyard. Later, a sack of hickory nuts appeared on the back steps. With Christmas came a crate. Um, th that spring, we found a croaker sack full of turnip greens. Atticus said Mr. Cunningham, Cunningham had paid them more than back, right? So just the way it, it worked there. And uh, uh, Scout asked her dad, Atticus, are we poor? And he says, indeed, we are. And he explains why. He says, uh, professional people were poor because the farmers were poor. As Maycomb County was farm country, nickels and dimes were hard to come by for doctors, dentists, and lawyers. And doesn't that make sense, right? If there's no money to be had, right, they're paying them like we joke about these days with chickens and and things. And this was really going on back then. So, I mean, it, it's kind of like the whole community had to succeed. Uh, this poor girl. Her and the teacher are just not hitting it off. Um, it was beyond my ability to explain things. Uh, and so she finally just says, Miss, uh, Miss Caroline, you're shaming him. You know, and uh, he, he can't pay you back. He ain't got no money. And so it says, Miss Caroline st stood stock still and then grabbed me by the collar, hauled me back to her desk, Jean Louise, I've had about enough of you this morning, she said. You're starting off on the wrong foot in every way, my dear. Hold out your hand. And so she holds out her hand, doesn't know what's going on yet. I thought she was going <laughs> to... I love this girl. Oh, my God. I thought she was going to spit in it, which was the only reason anybody in Maycomb held out his hand. It was a time-honored method of sealing oral contracts. Wondering what bargain we had made, I turned to the class for an answer. But the class looked back at me in puzzlement. <laughs> Miss Caroline picked up her ruler, gave me half a dozen quick pats, and then told me to stand in the corner. A storm of laughter broke loose when it finally occurred to the class that Miss Caroline had whipped me. <laughs> that was not their idea of a whipping in this town, right? A whipping then was like taken out to the woodshed and beat half to death. And so here this Miss Caroline's like, pat, 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 you know. And when the class realized what was going on, it, they just were in stitches. Now the teacher next door, Miss Blount, uh, hears all the ruckus. She's like an old school, uh, you know, teacher that really knows how to give a beating. And she walks in and like she's threatening them. Shut up, I'll burn you alive, you know, and just threatening. And uh, it scolds Miss Caroline. Hey, my class is trying to listen and, and stuff. And oh my gosh, I, I hated school because I grew up back in those days. Those teachers would beat you. I, I remember in third grade and... It was the teacher, Dr. Doyle, that taught me how to read. So I'm grateful for that. He, and I mean, I still enjoy reading to this day. And he really was a great teacher of reading. He owned a bookstore in our uh, town that we lived. But my God, was he mean. I, I mean, he, I remember him looking at us children like, 
we were such a nuisance to him. We could do nothing to please him. And his punishments, like he'd grab you by the arm, your little feet would be dangling, and he would smack you, and your feet would like actually fly up in the air, and then he'd time it and hit you again. It's like a swing set or something, you know? I remember him making me sit in a trash can as a punishment, my arms and legs sticking straight up, you know? It was, I mean, it was torturous. Like I, I got PTSD or whatever they call it from... Just elementary school. Oh, my God. I mean, teachers would bite you and just, I mean, mean. And uh, so I just got a kick out of this, even though I, I, um, I, I don't like that. I don't think teachers should hit. I don't think anyone should hit. I, I like that positive reinforcement, you know, or a better way to do it than violence. But I think we've come a long way in our school. I, I, that would not stand today. Oh, oh my gosh. So, oh, Scout's writing. It brings tears to my eyes of joy because it's so funny, so beautiful. She says, six years old, mind you, my sojourn, my sojourn, I can't even speak as well as her, my sojourn, sojourn in the corner was a short one, saved by the bell. Miss Caroline watched the class file out for lunch as I was the last to leave. I saw her sink down in her chair, bury her head in her arms. Had her conduct been more friendly toward me, I would have felt sorry for her. She was a pretty little thing. <laughs> oh, I love this book. Guys, I'm so happy that you guys chose this one to read for our next book at book club. Oh, did you love it? it uh, the banter, the writing, this girl using words that I can't pronounce. Loving it. All right, guys, we'll see you for chapter three.